Hello everyone. Welcome to my data camp tutorial series. I'm Professor Adam Kroom and today we will focus on introduction to the tidyverse. We're going to focus on chapter 1, data wrangling. Loading the Gapminder and dplyr packages. Before you can work with the Gapminder dataset, you'll need to load to our packages that contain the tools for working with it. Then display the Gapminder dataset so that you can see what it contains. To your right, you'll see two windows inside which you can enter code, the script.r window and the R console. All of your code to solve each exercise must go inside script.r over here on the right. If you hit submit answer, your R script is executed and the output is shown in the R console. DataCamp checks whether your submission is correct and gives you feedback. You can hit submit answer as often as you want. If you're stuck, you can ask for a hint or a solution. You can use the R console interactively by simply typing R code and hitting enter. When you work in the console directly, your code will not be checked for correctness, so it is a great way to experiment and explore. Instructions. Use the library function to load the uh, dplyr package, just like we've loaded the getminder package uh, for you. Type getminder on its own line to look at the getminder dataset. So on the right, we have some instructions. This says load the gapminder package. So to do that, you use the library function over gapminder. And then our next instruction is load the dplyr package. So we're going to use the library function dplyr. Next, we're going to look at the gapminder data set. And to do that, we just type gapminder. And then we submit our answer. Great job. Notice that you can see the gapminder data set in the console output on the lower right. See over here. This is called printing a data set. And let's continue. Understanding a data frame. Now that you've loaded the Gapminder dataset, you can start examining and understanding it. We've already loaded the Gapminder and dplyr packages. Type Gapminder in your R terminal to the right to display the object. And How many observations rows are in the data set? So the way we can do that is cool. So we did that. And now the question is how many observations are in the data set? And these are our possible answers. We have 1704, 6, 1694, and 1952. Having a look over on the right, it shows that we have a tibble 1704 times 6, right? So 1704 uh, rows and then six columns. So our answer is this 1704. Submit answer. Correct. Cool. Let's go ahead and continue. And we're going to advance through the videos so we can just focus on exercises in this tutorial. But I encourage you to take a moment and watch the videos on your own. So you can always just pause this tutorial, go watch the video, and then after you've completed the video, uh, come back to continue with this tutorial. 
All right, filtering for one year. The filter verb extracts particular observations based on a condition. In this exercise, you'll filter for observations from a particular year. Instruction, add a filter function line um, after the pipe, which is this right here. Yeah, so it's like a percentage, a greater than, and then another percentage. It's called a pipe. To extract only the observations from the year 1957. Remember that you use this to compare two values. So, excuse me, looking over here, what does it want us to do? It says filter the Gapminder data set for the year 1957. So Gapminder, yeah, filter. So it says instructions add filter function line after the pipe. So this is the pipe. So this is the line after the pipe. So we're gonna use the filter function and then we're going to extract only the observations from the year 1957. So we're gonna go year. This is to compare values 19. Okay, let's try that. That's right. Notice that all the observations in the output have the year 1957. So year 1957. Looks good. Let's continue to the next exercise. This exercise is called filtering for one country and one year. You can also use the filter function verb to set two conditions which could retrieve a single observation. Just like in the last exercise, you can do this in two lines of code, starting with gapminder filter and having the filter function on the second line, or a gapminder pipe and have the filter function on the second line. Uh, keeping one verb on each line helps keep the code readable. Note that each time you'll put the pipe at the end of the first line, like gapminder pipe. Putting the pipe at the beginning of the second line will throw an error. Instructions, filter the gap minder data to retrieve only the observations from China in the year 2002. So come over here onto the right. Filter for China in 2002. So we're gonna use, we're gonna filter the gap minder data set, gap minder. That's what it says to do over here. And then we're going to use the pipe. So let's go percent greater percent. That looks like a pipe. And then we're going to go filter year. This is the filter function year. The year we want is 2002. And then the country we want, there it is. China. Let's submit answer. Good work. This is a useful way to grab a single observation you're interested in. Let's continue to the next exercise. And we'll go ahead and skip through the video. The next exercise is called arranging observations by life expectancy. You use a range to sort observations in ascending or descending order of a particular variable. In this case, you'll sort the data set based on the life uh, EXP variable. Instructions, sort the gap minder data set in ascending order of life expectancy. Life expectancy right here. Sort the gap minder data set in descending order of life expectancy. Okay, so we're going to practice sorting in ascending and descending order. So on the right, sort in ascending order. So the way we're going to do that is, well, gap minder. Then we're going to use a pipe. And then we're going to, it wants us to use a range to sort 
the observations. So we'll use a range. And then what we're arranging is uh, life exp. Cool. Next, we're going to sort in descending order. So it's going to be very similar, in fact. So we can just sort of copy and paste this. But it's not going to be ascending. It's going to be descending. So what we'll do is we'll do that. And let's go ahead and uh, submit the answer. So this is ascending. This is going to be descending order. That's right. Take a look at the countries with the highest and lowest life expectancy. Is it similar to what you expected? Cool. Let's continue. Next exercise is called filtering and arranging. You'll often need to use the pipe operator to combine multiple deep liar verbs in a row. In this case, you'll combine a filter with an arrange to find the highest population countries in a particular year. Instructions. Use filter to extract observations from just the year 1957. Then use a range to sort in descending order of population. All right, so let's look on the right. And it says filter for the year 1957 then a range in descending order of population. So the data set we're working with is still Gapminder. We're gonna use, as you can tell, we're using the pipe a lot in these exercises. So we'll use the pipe and we're gonna filter. And it says it wants us to filter so that way we can extract observations for just the year 1957. So we're, right now year, the year we want is what, 1957. And then, um, and then we're gonna use a range to sort in descending order of population. So to do that, we're gonna use the pipe again. This time we're gonna use the arrange function and we're gonna, we wanna um, sort by um, descending order. So if we're going to sort in ascending order, it would be that. But for descending order, we're going to do that. So let's submit answer and see if that works. Great work. A lot of the exercises in this course will involve combining multiple steps with the pipe operator. So let's continue. And we'll skip through the video to get to the next exercise. And the next exercise is called using mutate to change or create a column. Suppose we want life expectancy to be measured in months instead of years. You'd have to multiply the existing value by 12. You can use the mutate verb to change this column or to create a new column that's calculated this way. Instructions, use mutate to change the existing life expectancy column by multiplying it by 12, like that, right? 12 times life expectancy. Use mutate to add a new column called life expectancy months. Calculate as Calculate as 12 times life expectancy. Look on the right. It's asking us to use mutate to change life expectancy to be in months. So what we're going to do, we're going to continue using the Gapminder data. And we're going to need a pipe. So we'll put one of those in there. And then we're practicing using the mutate function in this exercise, so mutate. What does it want us to mutate? To change the existing life expectancy column. So life exp. And we're changing this column by multiplying it by 12. So 
y of exp, whoops, exp times 12, right? Next, use mutate to create a new column called life exp months. Okay, so what we're gonna do there is uh, again, gap minder, and then we're gonna use the pipe and then uh, mutate. And we're gonna create a new column called life expectancy months. So life e x p months is equal to life e x p times 12, right? It says use mutate to add a new column called life expectancy months. So life expectancy months, and that's gonna calcu be calculated as 12 times life expectancy. So life expectancy times 12, or if you want 12 times either way, but just to make it super clear that that's what we're doing, we'll do that and let's submit answer. That's right. Press enter to continue. All right, and this next exercise is called combining filter, mutate, and arrange. In this exercise, you'll combine all three of the verbs you've learned in this chapter to find the countries with the highest life expectancy in months in the year 2007. Instructions. In one sequence of pipes on the GetMinder dataset, filter for observations from the year 2007, mutate to create a column life exp months calculated as 12 times life expectancy, and finally arrange in descending order of that new column. All right, so we have all the tools now in order to do this. The first thing that it wants us to do is filter, mutate, and arrange the GapMinder data set. So GapMinder, and then what's next? Well, the pipe. And the first thing it wants us to do is filter for observations from the year 2007. So what we're gonna do is go filter year 2007. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add another pipe. And then the next thing it wants us to do is mutate to create a column life exp months calculated as 12 times life exp. So to do that, we're gonna use mutate life exp months equals 12 times life exp. And you know what, just to make this a little bit easier for you to see, I'll put this on like distinct lines, okay? So GapMinder fil uh, pipe, filter year 2007, pipe, mutate, life exp months equals to 12 times life exp, pipe, And then finally, it wants us to arrange. And it wants us to arrange in descending. So we can also do this. Life exp months. And we just always want to make sure our syntax is good. So if you got two open parentheses, you need two closing parentheses. And that should be good. Let's give that a shot. Submit answer. Great work. Notice how you can combine several deep layer operations to answer a more complicated question like this. Cool, let's continue to the next exercise.